Here are the best tips and tricks to step up your game from being level one to an actual professional when it comes to using your iPhone. Are you sick and tired of seeing these like verify of your human puzzles that you have to do? Well, recently for iOS 17.5, there's a setting that you can enable which will allow your iCloud to verify that you're human by simply just going into your iPhone settings and on the very top portion where it says your name, click on here and then go into the sign in and security. And on this next page, scroll down and make sure you have automatic verification turned on. Now your phone will verify that you're human instead of you having to play that weird puzzle game or guess how many bridges are in this column of pictures. Now I know for this next one, I'm not the only one. Whenever you have two iPhones next to each other, they do that annoying, well, kind of cool looking, I gotta say, but they do this, this airdrop synchronization. Typically I'm charging my friend's phone and next to that charger is another wireless charger. So my friend's phone and my phone are next to each other and they're constantly doing that over and over again. There are tutorials online that show you how to do it incorrectly because they tell you to long hold here and then go into airdrop and then just turn off receiving off. But if you notice, if you take those two devices, it still does it. It's just like that. We literally just turn it off and still doing it. That's because that's not really how you properly disable that. You see, to actually disable this, you need to go in your iPhone settings and go into general and look for airdrop and where it says bring devices together, disable that. And now you still have your airdrop abilities. So we could put contacts only or your personal preference. Now, whenever you bring two phones to each other, it doesn't do it. For some reason, the bring iPhone is not included in the turn off receive ability, which is kind of annoying. So there is a hidden or well forgotten tool about the iPhone. Let's say for example, you're sending a message and somehow this happens. The text that you actually entered deletes. Well, you may be saying to yourself, well, I have to start over. Uh, no, actually, you see by taking three fingers and just tapping on a blank section of the display, it will bring up this little toolbar and you can actually tap undo. A little cool little toolbar right there. Pro tip, the calculator app. A lot of people always tend to forget this, but oh, let's say for example, you're answering a mathematical question, but then you're like, crap, I messed up. Instead of tapping cancel to clear all or see to clear all, I should say, you can just do a swipe. This will allow you to correct your mistake. For number four is having your contact bypass your focus mode. So by having somebody in a contact list, like your spouse, family member, a loved one, somebody who just wants them to always have access to you, even when your device is on focus mode, this is what you need to do. Go into your iPhone's contact section. So we're just gonna click on the phone app. Sorry for having all this blurred. I'm gonna keep everybody's privacy private, of course. But in the contact section, just go ahead and select the contact you want them to have access to your device to make a phone call and stuff, regardless on the mode your phone is in. So once you select one, tap edit. And what you wanna go ahead and do is go into ringtone, where it says default, enable emergency bypass, and just by tapping done, saving it. Now this caller has the ability to always get a hold of you regardless on the mode your phone is in. Next is a much more efficient way to crop images. So by going on your photo library and selecting an image, by zooming in, you'll see a new immediately crop icon appear right above here. You could tap on this and this will immediately crop that image. In addition to that, let's say for example, you're editing an image, right? You're changing the exposure, you're doing a bunch of other stuff. While you're editing, you can also tap on the image to revert back to the original. So you can actually compare right then and there. But once you're satisfied on edit, when you tap done, by tapping the little dot on the top right corner over here, you could actually copy this edit and go to a different edit and then tap that little dot again and where it says paste edit, you could paste the edits from one image that you already edit to the next one. So if you took the same image in the same situation and you just wanna apply that edit to all of them, you could just do that. Now, if you ever run into like a news article that just bombarding you with a bunch of random ads or it's one of those annoying websites where it tells you download this to see this type of thing, like download an app, there's actually a clever way to bypass this, which won't sabotage like the news articles and such if they rely on ads. You see, by going into your Safari, if we go in and go to like a random news article and we keep perusing until we find ads like this, to bypass this, simply just bring up this portion of your Safari menu, tap the AA icons, and go into website settings, and where it says use reader automatically, enable this, and now all those annoying pop-up ads will no longer bombard you as you're just perusing through an article. 
Now the ad still runs in the background, so they are still receiving their funds from the advertisers. So in a sense, it's a win-win. And if you notice, if you tap on the AA icons, you can also change the font style as well as the colors. And to reverse back, just simply undo the process like so. In addition to that, if you go on the very bottom, you can actually switch between different tabs you have open. And if you have a boatload of tabs like I do, by tapping on one and long holding on this little section, you close all the tabs right here. But I'm not going to go ahead and do that because I'm a rebel. <laughs> I just have so many unwanted ones. I'll probably clear this out at the end of this video. But long holding one of these tabs, if you want to make one into like a priority to prevent yourself from accidentally deleting it, you could actually pin the tabs. And if you tap on the top portion of the app, not only does it automatically scroll you all the way to the very top, but you'll find the ones that you pin it on top. You pin up on top. There we go. That makes more sense. And then if you like to undo, just repeat the process and just tap unpin. And you have the ability to delete it from here. And then if you're an individual who likes to listen to music or watch a video while you're about to go to sleep, like it allows you to go to sleep faster, using the timer app, if you go to the timer section, you can start like a five minute timer as an example. But when you click on it and where it says when timer ends, Instead of selecting the default sounds, if you scroll all the way down, you can select stop playing and then tap set. Whatever music you're listening to, whatever video you're watching, your iPhone will automatically turn off and lock itself. And to demonstrate that it works, I'm gonna set a five second timer. And then when timer stops, we want it to stop playing. Set, play, and then play this video I'm watching. Allow the timer to go off. And just like that, it locks our device and pause whatever media we're re listening to. Now, Guided Access is a good app to use if you want to allow somebody else to borrow your phone. It could be a kid, it could be a friend, but you don't want them to like peruse on your phone and go through your photos and such. As an example, you just want to lock them on like the phone. That's it. You don't want them to go anywhere else or an app like a game. You see, if you hop into your iPhone settings and scroll down to accessibility and go down, until you find guided access. Enable this and in passcode, enable face ID, or you can disable it entirely. Now select the app you want them to be locked into and then triple tap the power button. And where it says guided access, enable this, tap start, enter a unique pin code just in case of the backup. It could be anything, it could be something simple like right now. And now you notice it started and we are locked in this app. And even if you lock your phone, it's not gonna let you. You are stuck on here. So that's how you could personally lock your iPhone on an app so others can't go out of it and go somewhere else you don't want them to. And then just simply repeat the process to undo. It is gonna ask you for that pin code or face ID, depending on the preference you selected. And then just go ahead and tap N. I find that it works really great for kids. Pro tip, if you have one of these folders with notifications on top, but instead of clicking on the, no the folder itself and see what notification is coming from which app, by simply long holding, it will actually break down the notifications right then and there. And then if you like to hide some of these home pages you have on your iPhone, by long holding and going into wiggle mode and you select the little dots right here, you could actually uncheck mark some of these. Tap done, and if you go back, we just removed a, a little home page right here. And if you like to restore it, just check mark it and you'll see that it's back on your home page. And then of course these dots allow you to skip between the front or the back apps quickly on your home pages as well. So if you have like 20 pages, this is a great way to like hop between many, many different home pages you may have. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but whenever you download an app and then a little message pops up saying, hey, would you like to review this app? Uh, you could disable this. It's kind of annoying, I know, but at the same time, it's like, uh, there's a limit <laughs> at times, especially after you just downloaded the app. Like you're just in it like a couple of minutes or so far and already getting bombarded to review it. If you like to disable that annoying pop-up, go into your iPhone settings and go all the way to the home page right here and then scroll down to refine app store. From here, scroll down and disabled in-app rating and reviews. And now those annoying pop-ups should no longer pop up and bug you. But did you know by going into the app store and you go in and select an app that you already are using, you just want to quickly review, instead of manually writing a review, it's really quick. You can just tap the stars like that 
and it already submits. A lot of people don't know how easy it is to actually review an app. Of course, typing and such, that's a different story. That definitely does require more energy. You can just tap on the stars to quickly review apps if you feel like they deserve it. And then if you're using maps, it does support one-handed control. Instead of doing this to like pinch and zoom, you can just double tap and do that. This will allow you to quickly zoom in and zoom out one-handed. And lastly, if you haven't yet enabled haptic feedback on your keyboard, what is wrong with you? This is literally the best type of experience you could experience on a touchscreen. Because by simply just activating the key presses, it's pretty satisfying to feel. If you don't have this enabled, go into your iPhone settings, go into sound and haptics, and scroll down to find system sound and haptics. And here's where you go in and enable the keyboard haptic feedback, which definitely does make a massive difference when it type, comes to typing. It feels like, it just gives me vibes like Blackberry days. And there we have it. Those are the best tips and tricks you need to know to become a pro when it comes to using your iPhone. Now for the best tips and tricks, but for CarPlay, definitely check out this video over here where I highlight everything new for iOS 17.5 about Apple CarPlay and some cool features you definitely need to enable to really personalize it to your own personal preference. Thank you so much for watching.